gonna rotate the board and tap it free. Welcome to Corporal's Corner. If you wanna reduce friction, stop shouldering out, and get that ember, then today's your day, so stick around. Question, has this ever happened to you? You carve that perfect bow drill set. It looks good. It sounds good. You're going for it, utilizing the full length of that bow. It even feels good. Until a leprechaun or an imaginary elf shows up, sprinkles fairy dust all over it, and then at one point you were utilizing the full length of that bow, now you're short stroking it. It's harder. Your body starts to engage. Start making some noises, ah, 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 and then the spindle goes flying off somewhere. Why does that happen? My experience is because you're shouldering out. The once tampered spindle has now become flattened or rounded at the top. All you're doing is building up friction on the handhold and the flattened or rounded part of that spindle. It causes you to work harder, not smarter. So today what I want to do is go ahead and carve a lazy man's bow drill set an expedient way of carving a bow drill set, show you a couple tips or tricks to reduce that friction and guarantee that ember. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and talk about wood choice. Both these are tulip poplar. They could be cottonwood, they could be aspen, it could be spruce, it could be white pine, whatever you choose. The important takeaway is look at the heartwood. This one here, there's very little or no heartwood. While the one on the left is about 45% heartwood. I could probably still use this one and get an ember but it's gonna be extremely difficult. So my advice is, you see this, pick this one first time every time. Let's go ahead and talk about the Lazy Man's Bow Drill Set. It's very simple. All you're gonna do is grab your piece of wood of choice. Out here is two poplar. If you're on the west coast, say aspen or cottonwood. I want that piece to be anywhere from 12 to 18 inches in length and anywhere from two to three inch diameter. Preferably no knots. All we're gonna do is take that piece of wood. We're gonna go over about a good three inches Make a stop cut and split the wood down the middle. Easy peasy. So taking my piece of wood, I'm gonna look for a natural crack. There's one right there. And coincidentally enough, it's right there at the halfway point. So taking my knife, place it into that crack. then baton it all the way through. Now taking one of those halves, I can pick a side. Go over about three inches and make a stop cut. I want my board to be no thicker than a half inch. So I can cut down here a good probably quarter inch to maybe a good three eighths into here with my stop cut and then break that piece off. Say about right here. So from here, all we gotta do, clean up the sides. And the top portion's done. Flip it over, carve down any high spots. I can live with that.
The fireboard and spindle are complete. Now for your bow. One inch diameter, anywhere from fingertip to armpit in length, slight curvature, and you're good to go. Lastly, let's talk about our handhold. And that's our secret. You want to eliminate shouldering out, eliminate that friction, go with fat wood. So here's our fat wood. The darker, the better. You see all that resin inside there? It's a nice turpentine smell. This is perfect for fire starting and a bearing block or handhold for a bow drill. So taking my spindle and my rounded end, I'm gonna place it on my board. I want a good quarter inch from the outside of that spindle to the edge of my board. Just gonna rotate it over, make a mark where the center line is, and carve a divot. Want that divot to be the diameter of that spindle. Taking our fat wood, we're doing the exact same thing. Find our center point. Have a small indentation. Be good to go. The next step is you want to go ahead and seat that drill. All that means is you want to go ahead and take the diameter of that spindle and burn it into your hearth board. You're not carving a notch and you're not going for an ember. All you're going to do is seat that drill. So what we're going to do, take my left foot, place it on that board, right in the arch of my foot. Take my spindle, place it between my string and my bow. I'm going to go down in a way I should hear it lock. I'm going to roll it down, holds my fingers. Take my fat wood bearing block, place it on top. Top and bottom are both inside of those indentations. Then I'm going to lock my wrist to my shin, keeping that spindle perpendicular to that board. I'm going to start off slow. Utilize the full length of that bow. So from here, all we're going to do is we're going to carve a pie notch. And we want to carve that notch anywhere from one third to halfway inside of that indentation. So there's our pine notch. Last thing I did was I opened the bottom up to allow some airflow. Our notch is carved and we're looking good to go. Now for the final two steps. First off, I want to take that black, I want to carve that off that spindle. Think of it as being fire hardened. I want that fresh material. And second, I want an ember catch. Something I can place underneath that notch to collect that dust when it creates an ember. Looking outstanding. Let's go ahead and talk about two key points that can make or break you. Two things that I see people do all the time. First off, they take their board after they spent all that time carving it. Now granted today we went ahead and did a lazy man's bow drill set. It only took half as long. However, do you want to take that board, 
and place it directly on the ground where there could be mud, moisture, it could be humid outside, it could be raining, it could be getting ready to rain, there could be snow on the ground, there could be a blizzard. Do you want to take that board and risk introducing moisture into that board? I don't. So get a bandana, shamog, blanket, or something to put on that ground. Today we're at the Pathfinder School. I have a platform over here I'm going to use for the demo, so I don't care. Second thing, your ember catch. Leave the ember catch underneath the notch. Far too often I see people go, look guys, look guys, and the wind goes, whew, takes that ember right off there. Doing that once to learn, it's accidental. Doing it two or three or four times is stupidity. Same as before, take my spindle between the string and the bow, down and away. You should hear it lock. Fat wood bearing block, which is self lubricating. Put it into that indentation. Adjust my foot so I can lock my shin to my wrist. Keeping that spindle perpendicular to that board. I'm going to start off nice and slow and utilize the full length of that bow. Very gentle downward pressure. I want to fill that notch before I go for it. My notch is full. Rotate the board and tap it free. I see it smoking on its own, so I'm good to go. Now I can see that it's still smoking on its own. There's no hurry. Once it cherries up like a cigarette, then I can transfer it to my bundle or my bird's nest. You always want to bring the bundle or bird's nest to the ember and not the other way around. go. Once you get it lit, turn it over. Now you can insert this into your fire lit. If you look right here, there's very little or no shouldering out. Welcome back. Using a piece of fat wood for a bearing block is outstanding. It's self-lubricating, it reduces friction, and it will help you stop shouldering out. Combine that with a Lazy Man's Bow Drill Set, and you're unstoppable. As always, all the gear in this video can be found on my Amazon Influencer page. I'll toss a link inside the description box. Please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, and I'm going to catch you next time.